One day while wandering sanctuary, our Pip-Boy picks up a new transmission, and we begin a new quest, the Think Tank. Find the source of the transmission. It doesn't take long before we discover that the transmission is coming from just to the other side of the Sanctuary Bridge. About halfway to the Red Rocket truck stop, we discover an iBot sporting a non-standard paint scheme waiting nearby. <clears throat> Greetings, Vault Dweller. With that, we find the source of the transmission and complete the quest. We can try to talk with this guy. Just when I thought things couldn't get any stranger. It must seem like a strange coincidence. Us meeting here. But I assure you that it is not. My name is Daryl. Short for D-A-R-R-Y-L. I have been created to accompany you, by a group of people dedicated only to recording the history of mankind as it progresses after the Great War. I have been programmed primarily as a neutral source of information. A mobile encyclopedia, so to say. My prime directive is to not interfere. Even though we record history and never interfere or shape it, the organization has elected to provide you with my services. I can accompany you, and any companion you might be traveling with, to provide you with detailed information about locations and their history. In return for this service, I will document about the places you visit. Please express your preference at this point. What's this all about? The think tank that has created me has asked me to provide you with my services. I can offer you unique insights, and all information that is available to the think tank, on most locations that you visit, simply by asking me. It does sound interesting. There is not much else to say. I work for a think tank that's dedicated itself to preserving history by chronicling it as thoroughly as possible. For that reason, I myself and many iBots like me, have been sent out all across the former United States, to witness and record important events. If you will allow me to join you, then I will make my vast database of information available for your perusal. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's go. Agreed. I will follow you at a discreet distance. If you'd like to know more about any place that we visit, do not hesitate to ask me. As my systems do not allow me to interfere in any way, I will not engage in any form of combat, and will stay out of the way, should this ensue. I would subtly advise to abstain from using too much Stimpaks and chemical agents found in the Commonwealth. Besides over 90 different substances that can be harmful in the long term, the think tank has identified all kinds of bacteria on found samples. Okay, I mean, Stimpaks have treated us pretty good so far, but I guess we shouldn't double guess the think tank, the think tank. Wait a minute, what is this think tank? We can inspect our inventory to see these new items that Daryl gave us. In the aid section of our inventory, we find a Daryl scan module. When we activate it... Initiating area scan. Scans have revealed the following. Stinking filthy humans. Apologies. Vocal glitch. I meant lovely, intelligent, smart, and kind humans. A bobblehead. Stinky, filthy humans? Why do I not believe that was really... a glitch? Hi. Before we begin, Perhaps we should start with a short tutorial on how I can be of use to you. Yeah, alright. I can serve several purposes for you. You can engage my scanner to scan for enemies and useful items in the area. This will be a tactical advantage. You can engage me in dialogue and ask about the history and origins of important or landmark sites and places we visit. I also have a built-in alert system that will notify you of any enemies or bobbleheads in the area. When a normal enemy is close by, it sounds like this. When a very dangerous enemy is nearby, it sounds like this. When I have detected a bobblehead in the area, it sounds like this. I have provided you with a scan module. You will find it in the aid menu in your Pip-Boy. Assign it to a quick key so I can scan the area on demand. There are several small green lights on my body, which will indicate whether I have historical information about a location or not. I can also make a subtle sound to indicate whether information is available when entering a new location. All of these functions can be turned on or off, or configured at will, via the hollow tape that I have provided you with. Do not lose the hollow tape. Having said that, how may I be of service? Okay, makes perfect sense. At any time we can stop Daryl and ask him what he's thinking. Just curious what you're thinking. 
I have defragged memory banks 8 through 212. I am attempting to initiate the next batch. What are you thinking about? A fragment is a small part that was broken off or separated from a greater whole. What's on your mind? Sound travels mostly through the air. If there was no air, we wouldn't be able to hear sound. Anything you want to talk about? I was thinking about a story called Pinocchio, and how its symbols reflect the maturing of the human psyche. Many humans feel ashamed and humbled, when a cliché turns out to be the answer to their pain. They loathe the idea of something so profound to their experience, being relayed in such trite words. Yet clichés are often cliché, because they contain intrinsic truth. Now, we're standing on the Sanctuary Bridge right now. We can try to ask him about Sanctuary. I'm interested in the history of this place. I regret to inform you that I have no knowledge about this location. I will perform an area scan to mark anything of note. Scanning. One moment. Scans have revealed the following. A bobblehead. But he doesn't have any information. However, after he scans the nearby area, we see that an icon has appeared above that nearby wild mongrel corpse. It's a tire iron sticking out of the body. Ammo, caps, whatever you find, don't forget to share. And by looting it, the icon goes away. Moving back to Sanctuary, abruptly, Daryl makes a beep. We hear an informational beep. Oh, so Daryl does have information on Sanctuary, but standing on the Sanctuary Bridge just wasn't close enough. Let's see what he has to say about Sanctuary. I'm interested in the history of this place. This is Sanctuary Hills, currently very low on the threat level matrix. According to Think Tank Intelligence, the Minutemen remnants have targeted this location to create a smaller settlement. There are several key locations of interest nearby, Red Rocket Truck Stop, Vault 111, and a hidden root cellar in the back of the neighborhood. Bloatflies and other vermin have been spotted holding up inside the ruined houses during previous reconnaissance missions. Please proceed with care when entering this area for the first time. End of line. So looks like Daryl has a bunch of stuff to say about nearby points of interest in the Commonwealth, but we kinda have to get right up close to them before his dialogue will trigger. Now you may be wondering why you've never met Daryl before. After all, he's right next to Sanctuary. Surely we all would have met him in our gameplay. Well, you're not going crazy. Daryl here comes from a mod. That's right, you're watching Oxhorn's Mod Muster. Introducing Daryl from the Extended Lore Project Beta mod, lovingly created by Reginald001. As you've just seen, this mod gives us a brand new companion named Daryl, who can help provide some backstory on many of the locations we find in Boston. Taking a look at our holotapes, we can inspect the holotape Daryl gave us and told us not to lose. It's called the Daryl Configuration Interface. We can park Daryl. If we do, Daryl will stay at this location until we pick him up. The holotape reminds us not to forget where we parked him, but we actually don't really need to worry about that. We can fast travel anywhere we want. And even if we don't find him with us at any time, we can open up the holotape and choose Unpark Daryl. Daryl will then try to make his way back to us. It may take a while if we left him far away from our current location. In this example, I had left him at Mass Fusion, and he needed to come and meet me here at the castle. But I discovered that it didn't take too long at all. I turned around, and there he was. We find an option on Alerting Configuration, most of which we can either turn off or on. We can exclude all NPCs from alerting, and we can turn off or on the informational beep, the automatic scan alerting, we can change the alert interval, we can turn on or off alerts for bobbleheads, dangerous enemies, and regular enemies. Next, we can access scan configuration, and we find a number of things that we can have Daryl scan for or tell him not to scan for. We can turn it on or off altogether, and then toggle adhesives, ammo, armor, bobbleheads, caps, chems, holotape, skill books, star cores from Nuka World, stealth boys, and weapons. Ah, so that's why the icon appeared over the tire iron in the mongrel dog. It was set to scan for weapons. 
We can turn on or off Daryl's idle chatter. It's amusing to listen to for the first several minutes, but after a while he begins to repeat himself. So it's a nice option to have. And we can turn on or off Daryl's ability to speak the time, which he dutifully does every now and again. It's 12 in the afternoon. And when in combat, Daryl pops stealth. We can turn this feature on or off. Well, time to take Daryl for a spin. I started by heading up the hill to Vault 111, see if he had anything to say. But when I got to the elevator... The think tank thanks you for taking me to this location. And he gives us 50 caps. That's right, this is a mutually beneficial relationship. Looks like this think tank and Daryl doesn't know everything about the Commonwealth. They're hoping to expand their databases by exploring with us. Even though he tells us in Sanctuary that Vault 111 is just up the hill, apparently he doesn't know much about the place. I even tried taking him inside the vault, but he still had nothing to say about Vault 111. But he has a lot to say about many other places. I started by taking him to the Custom Tower House in downtown Boston. Upon arrival, he thanks and pays us. The think tank would like to offer this as token of appreciation for taking me to this location. However, unlike Vault 111, he actually has an entry on this place. Though I did have to stand in just the right spot for him to offer it to us. I'm interested in the history of this place. A custom house traditionally housed the offices for government officials that oversaw importing and exporting goods into and out of a country. The custom house tower had been empty for 14 years before the bombs fell, but its sturdy design has left it standing all these years. The tower itself is inaccessible, and the main entrance only leads to a small room with no notable loot. End of line. So looks like the caps may just be a periodic thank you based on traveled distance, rather than a reward for showing him a hitherto unexplored location in Boston. Next, I took him to Faneuil Hall, and after clearing out the mutants, he had this to say. I'm interested in the history of this place. When Henry walked up to the counter to pay for the new shirts and pants he'd taken, the Protectron robot seemed confused as it lurched forward. It took him several seconds to understand the horrific sight he was witnessing, as the malfunctioning Protectrons massacred six people. For a small moment, police thought he might be implicated, due to the amount of blood on his clothes, but somehow, miraculously, he was unharmed. The Protectrons had been installed due to pressure by the mayor, but it had been a rush job, leading to the Faneuil Hill Massacre. Henry did not have much time to heal from the trauma, as not much later, the bombs destroyed civilization. Opened in 1743, Faneuil Hall was a marketplace and meeting hall which was the site for several historic events. The site was the civic heart of Boston for nearly three centuries. I could tell you more about the events and speeches that took place here, but that would take too long for our purposes. Perhaps it will suffice to say that the building was called the Cradle of Liberty for a reason. Almost constantly occupied by super mutants, it's one of the more dangerous areas inside Boston. The inside of the building consists of old stores and stairways leading up back of the main hall. The think tank has observed quite some notable loot inside and it's worth investigating further, despite the danger of super mutants. End of line. Faneuil Hall is pretty interesting. The story he tells here is relayed to us on the terminal that we find inside the place. I covered the story of Faneuil Hall in my video on the topic that you can watch here. Next, I took him to the Boston Bugle Building. I'm interested in the history of this place. The Boston Bugle Building is relatively small. It consists of a lobby area with an elevator leading to the first floor, which is mostly collapsed. Protectron robots have been witnessed inside, protecting the building diligently for over 200 years now. There are no notable items inside other than historical documents and some miscellaneous objects. End of line. The historical documents he's talking about are many of the reporter's terminals that we find inside. And these terminals are chocked full of really interesting pre-war lore that greater expand on the political events going on at the time. You can watch my video on the Boston Bugle building by clicking here. Then I took him to Mass Fusion. Hey there. If our relationship would be one of student and teacher, who would be the student? And who the teacher? Can I teach you anything today? I'm interested in the history of this place. Welcome. 
Insert name here. This is mass fusion. The future of humanity through free and reliable fusion energy. As a company we have always maintained the highest standards of quality while making sure our products remain affordable and accessible to you. Come take a look in our state-of-the-art environmentally friendly offices during this tour of the mass fusion headquarters building. Our researchers are at the forefront of technology. So that you can power your home, your equipment, and your car with fusion technology safely. Please stay in your designated locations during the tour, and please do not speak to our employees while they are working. I will now guide your attention to the tour guide. Please follow his, hers, its, or their, instruction, slash instructions. End of line. Wow, I think that's my favorite one yet. A custom pre-war mass fusion jingle. Love the creativity that went into that one. Then, heading to Good Neighbor. Sure enough, he has something to say. I'm interested in the history of this place. Of the people. For the people. That's what they say about Good Neighbor. Yet the reality is more like. Of the people with the biggest guns. For the people with the biggest guns. But don't let Hancock hear I told you that. Before being renamed to Good Neighbor, this location was known as Scully Square. You can still see the name on the wall inside the third rail. Scully Square was a flashpoint for the early abolition movement. Author William Lloyd Garrison was attacked twice by an angry mob for printing his anti-slavery newspaper The Liberator, published in 1831. Mary Good Neighbor was a burlesque performer who was filmed performing a striptease in the Old Howard Theater by Boston's Vice Squad. It eventually marked the decline of the district. An interesting side note, Good Neighbor was named after Mary Good Neighbor, the burlesque performer caught doing that striptease. Most trade and jobs here will be of the criminal kind. Be careful when dealing with anyone. End of line. The history of Good Neighbor is really fascinating. Everything he just said is true. I covered all of it and shared some historical photos from the time in my videos on Good Neighbor that you can watch here. Then, heading to Hubris Comics, I was so glad to learn that he had something to say. I'm interested in the history of this place. I am Daryl, and this is my favorite store in the Commonwealth. Hubris Comics was an iconic store before the war. Filled to the brim with mint-packed first edition comics and rare collectibles. This store doubled as recording studio for popular radio plays such as The Silver Shroud and Grognak the Barbarian. The store itself still has quite some notable items of historical interest, such as a collector's edition grognak axe, and original costumes. Both raiders and scavengers have tried to explore the location, but found themselves eaten, by feral ghouls. Take the time to investigate every corner and room, as they may reveal very interesting finds. End of line. Oh man, Hubris Comics is chock full of fascinating lore. I did videos on it, but I'm out of card slots from my YouTube video, so I can't link to them. But check out my Fallout 4 lore playlist for the full story. Then, heading to the nearby Boston Library, we have to go to just the right door of the Boston Public Library for him to trigger his informational beep. I'm interested in the history of this place. The Public Library is a highly contested place in the Commonwealth. It's still guarded by Protectrons, though it's uncertain who has maintained them. The same can be said for the turrets that can be found all over the site. The think tank worries at the inclination of Commonwealth denizens to burn the few books that were left. Though heat is important in Moslow's hierarchy of needs, much knowledge has been lost in providing that basic need. The constant attacks of super mutants are of particular interest. Though it is highly likely that there is no underlying ironic reason for these, as the site is of strategic significance. End of line. Then, heading to the Massachusetts Turnpike, we can clear the raiders outside, then get Daryl in just the right position to hear some backstory. I'm interested in the history of this place. This is the Mass Pike Tunnel, which can be entered from three different locations. Often the site of territorial disputes between raiders and feral ghouls. The tunnels exit to Mass Pike Tunnels East and West and the Boston Police Rationing Site. Also known as the Ted Williams Tunnel, it carried the Massachusetts Turnpike and connected to South Boston, through Logan International Airport. As with so many underground sites, here too, victims of the war tried to find shelter, awaiting either death or gullification inside. The radiation permeated everything, everywhere, that was not built specifically to withstand radiation hazards. 
Subsequently, people found no uncontaminated food or water sources, leading to unimaginable suffering, in the weeks after the bombs fell. End of line. The real world Ted Williams Tunnel is interesting. I talked a lot about it and shared some photos in my video on the Massachusetts Turnpike. And then of course, of course, we can head to Diamond City. Hey. I am always excited to converse with you. This unit is ready for inquiries. I'm interested in the history of this place. This is Diamond City, also known as the Great Green Jewel. Before the war, the location was called Fenway Park. It currently houses around 50 people. The location itself is considered the largest settlement of the Commonwealth. But the think tank predicted some time ago that Minutemen activities might overshadow the settlement soon. Diamond City itself has several locations of interest, such as shops, a noodle stand, a chapel, a barber, medic, and restaurants in the upper stands. I encourage you to learn more about the history of this location by speaking to its denizens. End of line. But it's not just pre-war locations. Daryl has information on post-war locations, like the Cambridge Crater. Fortune always favors the brave, and never helps a man who does not help himself first. I am at your disposal, though hope you won't dispose me. I'm interested in the history of this place. The think tank estimates that the nuclear warhead that fell here and made the Cambridge Crater had a yield of 200 kilotons. A small yield explosion, compared to the bombs that fell in the glowing sea, targeting Sentinel site. The nuclear exchange between China and the United States lasted only for two hours, but left silence and utter destruction in its wake. The resulting devastation was of such proportions that it had a great impact on the climate, leaving it irrevocably changed for centuries to come. End of line. As we went on our way to our next location, we got into a fight with some bloat flies, and it was then that Daryl said something interesting and disturbing. I'm scared. Did you hear that? He said that he was scared, but he's an iBot. First he calls us a bunch of stinking, filthy humans, and then he says he's scared? There's something off about this guy. Next, we can take a stop at Kendall Hospital. I am amazed that you have gotten this far. I'm interested in the history of this place. Kendall Hospital has been a location of quite some dispute in the past few years. Currently occupied by a large group of raiders, it used to house the so-called Augusta Safe House for the secretive organization known as the Railroad. The place itself is a strategic nightmare, with many doors and corners, making it easily defendable. The think tank have observed the presence of an old and very powerful death claw, deep within the bowels of the hospital. I advise to proceed with great caution, powerful weapons, and plenty of ammunition, if your plan is to survive. End of line. I am pleased you are traveling with a companion at this time. It makes your journey that much safer. Ha! Huh. So he has information about the railroad. He knew that the Augusta safe house was here. I don't think anyone would know that, except of course for the railroad themselves, or the people who destroyed the Augusta safe house. Next, we can pay a visit to Cambridge Polymer Labs. <clears throat> Should one separate the creator from the created or intertwine and judge them as one? Query, how may I be of use to you? I'm interested in the history of this place. This is Cambridge Polymer Labs, a location of great interest to the think tank. Weary of disturbing the still active robots inside, think tank agents have yet to explore the location. It will be of great help to the think tank if we explore this location further. That gesture would not be forgotten. Historically, the labs were opened by three CIT graduate students, John Elwood, Erica Wellwood Willem, and Wilfred Bergman. Like so many other companies at the time, they were working for the military, engaged in research into defense technologies. It is strange that the site has not been claimed by raiders or other factions, leading to much speculation among historians of the think tank. End of line. Wait, he said the think tank has agents. But what, 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 what kind of agents? Like human, human agents or, or robot agents? Is Daryl an agent? What other faction can we possibly think of that routinely sends agents into the Commonwealth? Now, Daryl doesn't have something to say for every location, and some of the omissions are pretty striking. I started by taking him to some of the more iconic pre-war locations in Boston, but often I was disappointed. 
He doesn't have anything to say at Paul Revere's house, despite the plaque outside and the statue nearby. He has nothing to say at Haymarket Mall, nothing to say at the Old Granary Grounds, an interesting pre-war site that I covered in my video on the Golden Cricket. He's got nothing to say about Swan's Pond or the nearby New State House, both of which have really interesting pre-war lore. Omissions like this were surprising to me, but the mod author says that Daryl has over 220 programmed locations to talk about, and he plans to add even more. So it looks like Daryl here is a bit of a work in progress. He's already an interesting, handy companion to have, and he's just going to get better with time. I was then pretty curious about what he would say if we visited the headquarters of all of the major factions, but I was really disappointed taking him to the castle, he has nothing to say, even though Fort Independence has a long and storied history, which I covered in my video on the castle. I then took him to the Old North Church, both inside and out, the headquarters of the railroad, but he had nothing to say. I suppose it could be that he didn't know the railroad was here. I then took him to the Commonwealth Institute of Technology, but he didn't have anything to say. Now, in my game save, I had destroyed CIT, and I tried to get as close as I could, but the dialogue never triggered. Now, maybe that was because it was destroyed. Thankfully, he did have something to say when I took him to the ruins of the Boston airport. I'm interested in the history of this place. This is the Boston airport. It is a location of significant strategic importance. It's location central in the Commonwealth. The area is divided into multiple sections, with the main facility building at its center. Currently the Brotherhood of Steel have occupied the area, securing it with automated defenses and military personnel. According to last known intelligence, the entire site was inhabited by feral ghouls, and that is likely still the case in the lower levels. My scanners pick up a fat man weapon in a car, near the water on the runway. Inside there are also several items of interest. The lower levels cannot be entered without approval from the Brotherhood of Steel Soldiers. End of line. What a cool companion! I would love to start a brand new playthrough of Fallout 4 just to have this guy tag along, and I'm so thrilled that he doesn't really alter the gameplay in any way. He's just a lore companion. He doesn't add carry weight, he doesn't attack, he helps us out a little bit with finding nearby items, but it doesn't really feel like we are using a cheat. Daryl is just telling us more about this amazing world. But is it lore friendly? I mean, uh, I don't know. I suppose it depends on who exactly is this think tank. Who would create an iBot to go out into Boston and conduct surveillance? Who would develop an iBot that was on the verge of becoming sentient? An iBot that already regarded humans as stinky and filthy? An iBot that could express fear. And who would paint an iBot in red and white? I guess it'll have to remain a mystery. But yes, as far as new companions can be lore friendly, this guy is. I must admit that I typically don't review companion mods, because most of the ones I have explored so far haven't really attempted to be lore friendly. But this one is all about the world, all about the lore of this universe, and they get it right. Though the mod author says in his description that sometimes Daryl will get some things wrong, and that's intentional, because we have to remember this iBot was programmed by the think tank. The think tank doesn't know everything about Boston, which is why they sent the iBot here to begin with. And the think tank, and therefore Daryl, might at times get some things wrong. And I actually think that's a nice touch. But what are your thoughts about Daryl and the extended lore project, which is currently in beta? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter, at Oxhorn. 
I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. If you like this mod and you want more mods like it to be made, the best thing you can do is encourage the mod author by donating. For many mod authors, mods like these are passion projects. They don't make a lot of money doing them. It's a hobby to them, and I know that they would genuinely love your financial support. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. Patrons and members gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get little badges that appear by their names in the comment sections of my videos, and access to new aux emojis that they can use during the chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.